We're here to demonstrate a live reenactment of the process of finding a well-known security exploit, downloading the vulnerable code, and scanning it with Black Duck Hub to demonstrate how you can sometimes be blind to the vulnerabilities of open source if you rely solely on scanning technology that uses package manager declaration as the only discovery method. We'll start by searching on vulnerabilities from 2017. As you can see, one of the top matches is regarding the recent SambaCry vulnerability, identified in May as CVE-2017-7494. Samba is ubiquitous and found on many Linux systems, and it provides SMB and CIFS services. Let's now do another search to see if we can find an exploit for it. Sure enough, the first match is a link out to GitHub, where we can find the actual exploit code and the code for a vulnerable container environment. I'll now copy the available repo link so we can clone the Git repository locally. I'll quickly build a new folder into which we can download the exploitable code, and then issue a git clone command to retrieve it. With our Samba environment cloned, we can navigate into the subdirectory and see the Docker orchestration files needed to build the image. Now we can use the docker build command to construct the image itself. The docker images command verifies that the image now exists. We'll follow that with a docker run command to spin up that image into a running container. We can confirm it's running with the docker ps command. Now we'll attach to the container and navigate through its structure with the docker exec command. Once inside, we can use the Debian package manager commands to traverse the container contents. But as you can see, the package manager is unaware of the presence of Samba, even though we can clearly see it when we issue a find command. What I'd like to do now is use Black Duck Hub to scan this vulnerable container to see if Samba is detected as open source and mapped to the correct Samba Cry CVE. I've already downloaded and installed the Black Duck Hub scanner to my local machine, so I can issue a simple CLI command to invoke it and scan the image. When the scan is complete, the results are then made available in the hub. Here we can see the new project that the scanned results were mapped to. We can then drill down into the project version to see the complete bill of materials, which is a listing of all the open source found within the image. The match type column is significant as it reflects which detection methodology was responsible for providing the match. As you can see, Perl get text was actually found through both methods. The file dependency match type indicates it was found through the package manager declaration method, while exact implies that it was also found through our signature scanning technique. However, there are other instances where a component was only found via the signature method, like for CLVM. These two methods complement each other to give you a more complete bill of materials. We can use the search bar to filter the results and look for Samba 459 specifically. And here we see the component as expected. The match type confirms what we saw earlier in that this was found exclusively through traditional signature scanning and not through dependency analysis from the package manager. We can also see that there are some known security vulnerabilities associated with it. If we click on the vulnerability count icon, we can get to a page where we can see the specific CVE identifiers. We'll locate Samba in this list and we see CVE 2017-7494 which is the SambaCry vulnerability we started out with. We're also provided with remediation guidance information to give us insight as to which version of Samba is free of the SambaCry vulnerability.